Welcome to the Shodex HPLC webinar on demand, brought to you by Showa Danko America, manufacturers of Shodex HPLC columns since 1973. In this webinar, we'll be discussing column selection based on sample properties. In our webinar, we'll discuss the principles of separation, followed by column selection based on sample characteristics. High performance liquid chromatography, or HPLC, involves the mutual interactions between the solid phase and the sample, the sample and the mobile phase, as well as the mobile phase and the solid phase. Here we see a diagrammatic example of the interaction between the analytes, in this case two analytes represented by a red star and a green sphere with the stationary phase. As the analytes progress through the column, one of the analytes will interact more strongly than the other analyte based on either chemical or physical interactions. We see the progression of the analytes through the column in the bottom right hand of the screen. The green sphere is retained more than the red star. That is, the red star elutes faster, and we see it on the chromatic interim as a peak before the green sphere. So how do the analytes move through an HPLC column? That HPLC column is part of an HPLC system shown here in this diagram. The bottom left of the diagram we see a jar labeled mobile phase. The mobile phase may be aqueous or organic in nature and it is also called the eluent. The eluent moves often through a degasser to remove gases that may have a detrimental effect on the separation of the analytes. After the degasser, the eluent moves through a pump. Again, the pump can be used to optimize the pressure at which the eluent flows through the column, thus making the, the analyte separation better or worse. After the pump, the eluent moves past the injector port and into the column. From the column, the element moves into a detector where a signal is taken and then into the waste stream. The analytes themselves are injected at the injector port. This is usually after the pump. The element carries the analytes into the column and based on physical or chemical or both interactions between the stationary phase, the analytes, and the mobile phase, the analytes are then separated as they move through the column. Afterwards, the analytes, along with the eluent, move into the detector. Again, the signal is taken from the detector, moved into a data station, where the analyst can identify the analytes. At the beginning of the presentation, we discussed the interactions between the analytes in the stationary phase, as well as the mobile phase. Those interactions may be chemical or physical in nature or both. In this diagram, we show the molecular weight versus the polarity. Compounds may have various features of either low or high molecular weight, low or high polarity, or a mixture of the two. In this diagram, we've separated the different types of compounds into four basic groups, A, B, C, and D. Group A is high molecular weight, low polarity, Group B is high molecular weight, high polarity. Group C is low molecular weight, low polarity. And group D is low molecular weight, high polarity. By breaking these groups down into four groups, we can more easily identify the chemical or physical nature of the analytes in question and then be able to select the most proper and the most efficient column. These sample groups help us determine which type of separation is the best. For group A, high molecular weight and low polarity, typical examples include resin epoxy and polycarbonate. These are polymers that have very low polarity. The best separation mechanism is size exclusion chromatography, often abbreviated SEC. 
principles of size exclusion chromatography can be described in fairly simple terms. If we look at the upper left hand corner of the screen, we see a pink sphere. This represents a gel particle that's representative of the solid support of an SEC column. The pink sphere or particle has pores of controlled size. On the surface, the pore size tends to be larger. As we penetrate into the sphere, that size becomes smaller. Thus, we have compounds or analytes of different sizes that are represented by the blue, green, and purple, and gold spheres. Analytes of small size, such as the blue or green sphere, can penetrate deeply into the particle, whereas the purple sphere may only penetrate into the surface. Thus, the retention times are different for each particle. The blue sphere takes longer to elute through the column than the green, and the green longer than the purple. For compounds or analytes that are very large, that is too large to penetrate the particle at all, those particles will elute very quickly through the column. In fact, those particles or those analytes will elute with the exclusion volume. We call this the exclusion limit volume or the exclusion limit for the particle. So the gold sphere, for example, will elute very early before the rest of the chromatogram. Thus, we cannot get specific size information or very good separation for the gold particle or analyte. As mentioned, in a size exclusion chromatogram, the larger size particles elute faster than the smaller and smallest size particles. In size exclusion chromatography, the retention time depends on the volume and not the molecular weight. However, we have to be very careful of the volume that a compound resides in. That is, because of folding patterns and solvent influences, the volume that a compound will reside in may be different, and it may not be based on molecular weight. For example, we have on the left a compound that has a molecular weight of 1000. This compound may be a linear sugar that has very poor folding properties and very poor intermolecular attractions. On the right, we have a compound with a molecular weight of 100,000. That compound may be a protein that can fold very efficiently into a small volume. Thus, the compound on the left, a linear sugar, for example, is contained in the same volume that the protein on the right is contained in. The Shedex catalog takes these differences into account. For example, on this page of the catalog, we show the comparable exclusion limits of pulolin versus protein. Pulolin, a standard that we offer, is a long chain linear sugar with poor folding properties. Thus, its exclusion limit is lower than that of a typical protein. We also offer or list the exclusion limits for polymers such as polystyrene shown at the bottom of your screen. In size exclusion chromatography, we can use an aqueous based solvent as the eluent or an organic based solvent as the, elu as the eluent. Some examples of an aqueous based solvent include water, buffered water, or an acidic or basic solution. Some examples of organic solvents include tetrahydrofuran, dimethylformamide, NMP, chloroform, toluene, etc. Strictly speaking, we refer to aqueous based size exclusion chromatography as gel filtration chromatography, or GFC, whereas the organic based size exclusion chromatography we refer to that as gel permeation chromatography, or GPC. These are traditional definitions for aqueous-based and organic-based size exclusion chromatography. Solvent matching is important in choosing any HPLC column or developing any HPLC method. It's also important in choosing the correct SEC column. This diagram 
what looks complicated is actually fairly simple if we start off with our sample at the bottom of the diagram and progress upward. That way we can choose not only the correct solvent, but we can also choose the correct column and the correct packing material, which is most important. Left of center, at the bottom, we see water-soluble substances. These are substances that can be dissolved in water, acetonitrile, methanol, or any mixture thereof. To a certain extent, they can be also mixed in with miscible solvents, such as DMF. These substances will work well with either a silica base column or a polyhydroxymethacrylate column. Also, there's a polyvinyl alcohol column. The polyhydroxymethacrylate and polyvinyl alcohol are examples of polymer-based packing materials for SEC columns. Right of center, we see lipid-soluble substances. These are substances that can be dissolved in chloroform, toluene, hexane, mixtures of those, or other similar solvents. Those lipid-soluble substances are best suited for polymer-based packing materials such as polystyrene codivinyl benzene. However, they are also ideal for packing materials such as polyvinyl alcohol. In fact, you can see polyvinyl alcohol is suited for both. And that's one of the advantages of polymer-based packing materials. They can be used for just about any type of SEC column and separation. For our water-soluble samples or substances, we can choose a KW series. This is our silica-based packed SEC column. Or we can choose the SB series. This is our polymer-based SEC column. In terms of lipid-soluble substances, we can choose the KF, KD, or K type of column. These columns are suited for certain substances. For example, the KF is suited for THF. The KD is suited for DMF. However, we have a special series of columns, our GS and GF series, which can be changed for different solvents. These are a special series which we will discuss later. Some typical SEC or GPC, that is gel permeation chromatography examples, include 1,2-polybutadiene, as shown on the left. Here the separation was accomplished with a Shodex GPC KF805L column. In this case, two columns were used in series, with the eluent being THF. As discussed on the previous slide, the KF stands for a polymer-based column that is suitable and packed in THF as the eluent and as the shipping solvent. The flow rate here was about one mil per minute, and a typical RI detector was used in a column oven temperature of 40 degrees C. On the right, we see styrene ethylene butylene which is an ABA block copolymer in this case. Here the separation was accomplished using a Shedex GPC KF806M column. Again, there were two columns used in series and the eluent was THF. Some more examples of high molecular weight low polarity separations include on the left styrene acrylonitrile. 3070 copolymer. This separation was accomplished using the GPC KD806M column. It's two columns in series. The 0.01 molar lithium bromide and DMF solvent. The flow rate was about 1 mL per minute and the column temperature about 50 degrees C. On the right we have peak polyether ether ketone. That separation was accomplished using a GPC K806M column, 
two columns in series with a 90-10 mixture of chloroform dichloroacetic acid. The flow rate, 1 mL per minute in the oven temperature or column temperature, 30 degrees C. Both use a typical RI detector. Sample type group B. These are high molecular weight, high polarity compounds. Again, high molecular weight being most often above 2,000 Daltons. And high polarity examples include polysaccharides, some proteins, and aqueous polymers. Separation mechanism, size exclusion, or ion exchange, IEC. As you can see from the title at the top, we've changed our terminology. We're using GFC gel filtration chromatography instead of GPC because in this case we're using an aqueous solvent. That's because our high molecular weight compound is also of high polarity and dissolves in water. In this example, we are using, we're separating 0.1% pectin from citrus at 100 microliter sample. That separation was accomplished using an OH pack SB806M HQ column, two columns in series. If you remember from the diagram, the SB columns are suitable for aqueous solvents. In this case, our solvent is a 0.1 molar sodium nitrate buffered water with a 1 mL per minute flow rate and column temperature of about 40 degrees. Another example of a high molecular weight, high polarity compound is inulin. In this example, we have a 0.1% concentration of inulin, a 100 microliter sample. The separation was accomplished on the Shedex SB806M HQ column. In this case, there were two columns in series. The eluent is a 0.1 molar sodium nitrate buffered solution. The flow rate is one mL per minute and the detection was accomplished using a Shodex RI detector. The column temperature, the oven temperature, was 40 degrees Celsius. Shodex also offers the KW series for traditional silica-based separations of high molecular weight and high polarity compounds. In this example, we are separating five different compounds. Those compounds include thyroglobulin, and gamma globulin. On the right, we see not only the separation, but also the percent recovery. And the percent recovery with a KW802.5 versus a KW803. We mentioned a few slides ago that for high molecular weight high polarity compounds, we can use size exclusion chromatography or ion exchange chromatography. In ion exchange chromatography, or IEC, these are separations based on differences in functional groups. In the diagram below, we see our particle, which is our part of our column support, solid support. Around that, is an anion of the eluent. However, if we have compounds or analytes that are stronger or more, in this case, anionic than the anionic solvent, they will interact more strongly with the particle or the solid support of the column. In other words, an exchange between the anionic eluent and the anionic compound or analyte occurs this is the basis of ion exchange chromatography. That is, the stronger the negativity, the stronger the retention. Going back to our examples of separations of high molecular weight, high polarity compounds, in this example, we are separating four compounds that include conalbumin and a trypsin inhibitor. The separation is accomplished by having our, the surface of our solid support modified 
with quaternary ammonium functional groups on the surface of the particles. Those quaternary ammonium functional groups, they're positively charged, so we have a positively charged surface. The analytes displace the anionic solvent. Of course, the analytes being stronger in anionic activity, they will adhere, adhere to the surface more readily than the anionic solvent. Of course, the stronger anionic analyte will adhere more readily than the weaker analyte. Thus, the weaker analyte will loop faster. In this separation, we used an IEC QA825 column. Our eluent is actually a gradient. It's 20 millimolar HCl buffered at pH 6 piperazine as our A eluent and our B eluent includes a 0.5 molar sodium chloride. The linear gradient from 0 to 30 minutes was 100% A to 50% B, a flow rate of 1 mL per minute, and in this case a UV detector was used. The previous example is an example of a column that was used in cationic exchange mode. In this example, we are using a different column in anionic exchange mode. This column, an IEC SP825 column, has particles on its solid support inside the column that have sulfyl propyl functional groups on the surface. Those sulfyl propyl functional groups are negatively charged. As with the cationic example, in this example, the analyte being positively charged will displace the weaker cationic solvent. And of course, the stronger cationic analyte will displace also the weaker cationic analyte. Thus, the weaker cationic analyte dilutes faster. As mentioned, for this separation, in this case, angiotensins 1, 2, and 3, an SP825 column was used, and a gradient was used as the eluent. The A gradient is a sodium phosphate buffer, buffered to pH 7.0. It's about a 20 millimolar phosphate buffer. And B is a 0.5 molar sodium chloride buffer at pH 7. The linear gradient went from A to B in 60 minutes, flow rate of 1.0 mLs per minute, and again a UV detector was used. Going back to our molecular weight versus polarity graph, we are now going to look at group C. This is low molecular weight and low polarity types of compounds. Examples of these kinds of compounds include fatty acids, small molecule pharmaceuticals, and lipid soluble vitamins. The separation mode or separation mechanism we have a choice of size exclusion chromatography or normal or reversed phase chromatography. In normal phase chromatography, the separation is based on differences in polarity. You can see in the center left of the screen, we have a particle that comprises the solid support of our HPLC column. That particle, the base gel, is modified on the surface with hydrophilic functional groups. Therefore, they are attracted to the hydrophilic functional groups of the molecules or analytes that we are trying to separate. The hydrophobic part of the functional of the analyte, if there is a hydrophobic part, will face away from the hydrophilic surface of the particle. This also means that hydrophobic eluents should be used and this hydrophobic eluents will pass through the column unretained. The strength of retention is hydrophilic over hydrophobic. So as you can imagine, highly hydrophilic molecules will be retained longer than moderately or weakly hydrophilic molecules or analytes. An example of a low molecular weight 
low polarity separation in normal phase mode includes this example of vitamin E. This is a 20 microliter sample and it's a separation of alpha, beta, gamma, and delta tocopherol in different concentrations. A 5 sil 4D silica based column was used. The eluent is N hexane, isopropanol, and acetic acid at a ratio of 1000 to 6 to 5. The ratio is used in this manner to include the washing of the column and to ensure that all of the sample analyte is eluted. The flow rate was 1 mL per minute and because of the nature of the molecule, a fluorescence detector was able to be used. The column temperature was about 30 degrees Celsius. Normal phase chromatography uses nonpolar organic solvents. These can be toxic and hard to dispose of. Thus, reverse phase chromatography through history has become the most popular mode of separation. These, again, are separations based on polarity. In this case, the separation is reversed from that of normal phase chromatography. Here, our base gel or particle, which makes up our solid support in our column, is modified on the surface with hydrophobic groups. Thus, they attract the hydrophobic groups of our analyte. The eluent is hydrophilic in nature. The strength of retention is hydrophobic over hydrophilic. As mentioned in the previous slide, hydrophobic functional groups are used to modify the surface of the polymer based gel or the silica base. In this slide, we see the offerings that Shodex has in terms of its polymer based gels and its silica base for packing materials in the HPLC columns for reverse phase chromatography. Traditionally, the silica base was used and modified with an octadecal C18 functional group. However, in the polymer base, we can use other types of functional groups to modify the surface, such as sulfur groups or quaternary ammonium. As mentioned, Reverse phase chromatography works well with low molecular weight nonpolar compounds such as small molecule drugs. In this example, we see a separation of cold remedy ingredients. The separation was carried out with a Shodex C18 4D silica based column. The column size is 4.6 mm ID, 150 mm in length. The eluent is an acetonitrile water phosphoric acid mixture at a ratio of 510, 490 to 1. Also, a 0.5% sodium dodecyl sulfate surfactant was added. The flow rate was 1 mL per minute, and a UV detector at 210 nanometers was used. The column temperature was 50 degrees Celsius. In another example, we accomplish a separation of an anticonvulsant, which includes phenobarbital, phenytoin, and primidone. Again, we're using a C18 4D 5 micron particle size column. The size is 4.5 by 150. In this case, the eluent used is a 100 millimolar phosphate buffered solution, buffered to pH 2.1, along with methanol and acetonitrile at a ratio of 4 to 2 to 1. The flow rate, 1 mL per minute, and again, a UV detector was used. Column temperature, 40 degrees C. With all the choices of HPLC columns that are in the market today, there are still only two basic choices, a polymer-based or ODP column, or a silica-based or ODS column. So which one to choose? The polymer-based or ODP column has relatively lower resolution and a relatively higher price. However, the ODP column can operate at a wider pH range between 2 and 12. It's possible to operate under low salt concentrations, whereas with an ODS column, that's almost impossible. The ODP column has a longer column life in general. It's possible to inject concentrated samples, has good separation of hydrophilic substances, 
and it's also possible to separate basic substances without a reagent. In this example, we show the advantage of an octaducal polymer base column or an ODP column over an octaducal silica base column or an ODS column. In this specific example, we show the separation of local anesthetic drugs benzocaine, lidocaine, and tetracaine hydrochloride. Using an ODP 54D column at a pH of 3, lidocaine and tetracaine hydrochloride are very poorly resolved. Benzocaine elutes last. At a neutral pH of 7, because of polarity differences in the change in pH, benzocaine elutes first and is poorly resolved from lidocaine and tetracaine. Lidocaine and tetracaine hydrochloride aren't resolved at all. However, at a pH of 11, all three components are clearly resolved. Again, this was done on a polymer-based odp 54 d column. With a silica-based column, this is impossible to do. The solid support in the column would be destroyed. However, this is a normal working condition of the odp 54 d Here we see some more examples of separations done under alkaline conditions. On the left is the separation of procanamides, which includes salicylic acid, caffeine, and procanamide, as well as an acetyl procanamide. This is a 0.1% each 8 microliter sample. The separation was accomplished using a DE613 column with dimensions of 6. 0 0.0 millimeter ID and 150 millimeter column length. The eluent is a 50 millimolar sodium phosphate buffered solution with acetonitrile at a 70-30 ratio. And the flow rate was 1 mL per minute and a UV column was used at a relatively high temperature of 60 degrees C. On the right, we have a separation of local anesthetics that include benzocaine, lidocaine, and tetracaine. Again, pH is relatively high, about 9.0, and we use, in this case, a DE413. The DE413 column has dimensions of 4.6 millimeter ID and 150 millimeter column length. In this case, we're using a 20 millimolar sodium phosphate buffered solution, acetonitrile, at a 50-50 ratio, at 0.8 mL per minute flow rate, and 40 degrees is the column temperature. So this brings us to our final group in the molecular weight versus polarity diagram. Group D, these are low molecular weight, high polarity compounds. These compounds include organic acids, inorganic ions, and saccharides. The separation mechanism is SEC, IEC, IC, ion exclusion, or normal or reverse phase. In other words, these compounds are the most diverse and can be used under the most highest variety of columns and separation modes. We saw an example a few slides ago of a separation in ion exchange chromatography in cationic mode. Here again, we're using cationic mode to separate low molecular weight, high polarity compounds. Amino acids are ideal for that since they are, of course, very low molecular weight and they tend to be high, molar high polarity in nature. The separation here includes 12 compounds that include isoleucine, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, glycine, histidine, and arginine, among others. The separation was accomplished with an ICYS50 column, dimensions 4.6 ID, 125 column length in millimeters. The eluent was a 5 millimolar phosphate buffer aqueous solution, a flow rate of 1 mL per minute, and an RI detector was used. The column temperature was about 40 degrees C. Ion exclusion chromatography is a separation that is based on two different chemical interactions that are in equilibrium with each other. 
in our diagram at the lower center, we see our particle, which is a styro styrene divenyl benzene copolymer gel that's been modified with sulfo groups. Our analyte, in this case, a non-ionic carboxylic acid with an R moiety, is in equilibrium with its ionic form. In its non-ionic form, the analyte is retained by hydrophobic interaction. However, in its ionic form, it's excluded by ionic repulsion. In this example, we see the separation of a group of organic acids that are low in molecular weight and high in polarity. These acids include oxalic acid, pyruvic acid, tartaric acid, gluconic acid, ascorbic acid, formic acid, and acetic acid, among others. The separation was accomplished using a NARS pack KC811 column. There were four columns used in series. The eluent was a one millimolar perchlorate aqueous solution. Ion chromatography can be performed in two modes, either suppressed conductivity or non-suppressed conductivity. In terms of Shodex columns, there are two types of suppressed conductivity columns, anionic and cationic. The anionic include the SI90, the SI50, and the VH anion. A cationic offering is a YS50. In terms of non-suppressed conductivity, Columns include the anionic I524A and Ni424. And cationic, you can still use the YS50 as well as the YK421. Ion chromatography is often used in the analysis of water or wastewater, where the analyst is looking for fluorides, chlorides, bromides, and other hazardous chemicals in the water or the wastewater supply. In this example, we have ion chromatography in anionic mode and the separation of ions such as fluorides, chlorides, nitrides, nitrates, phosphates, and sulfates. We can see here that the separation was accomplished using an SI94E. This is in suppressed mode. The eluent is a 1.8 millimolar sodium carbonate buffered solution plus a 1.7 millimolar sodium bicarbonate solution. Flow rate of 2 mils per minute and the separation was accomplished at ambient or room temperature. Ion chromatography can be performed in cationic mode as well. In this example we see the separation of cations such as lithium, sodium, and magnesium, among others. The separation was performed using a YS50 column. The eluent was a 4 millimolar nitric acid, 1.5 millimolar, 18 crown 6 ether aqueous solution with acetonitrile, and a 90 10 aqueous acetonitrile ratio. The flow rate was 1 mil per minute and a conductivity detector was used. Saccharides comprise some of the most diverse compounds or analytes out there. Therefore, they can be separated using a variety of modes. These include ligand exchange, helic, ion exclusion, and size exclusion. Helic phase chromatography or hydrophilic interaction chromatography is a modification of normal phase chromatography. As you can see from this example, the base gel is modified on the surface with hydrophilic functional groups similar to normal phase. These will attract the hydrophilic portions of the analytes that are being separated. Helic phase chromatography also uses hydrophobic eluent, although it tends to be more forgiving than in normal phase. The polarity in order of highest to lowest is the packing material, the hydrophilic functional groups, 
and then the sample, the hydrophilic portion of the sample, followed by the eluent, which is very low in hydrophilicity. The strength of retention is hydrophilic over hydrophobic. An example of a separation in helic mode includes the separation of saccharides. In this example, we have a 10 microliter sample with a concentration of 5 mg per mil each of glucose, maltose, maltotriose, maltotetrose, and other saccharides. Next to the sample list, we can see the order of increasing hydrophilicity from glucose to hepto, maltoheptose. The separation was accomplished using an Asahi pack NH2P54E column. The eluent is water acetonitrile at a 40 to 60 ratio. As you can see, with the helic mode column, we can use water and we can use more forgiving organics such as acetonitrile. The flow rate was 1 mL per minute and an RI detector was used. The column temperature was 30 degrees C. If you look at the chromatogram, you can see that the least hydrophilic substance eludes first, followed by the others, and number seven, maltoheptose, eludes last. Ligand exchange chromatography involves the exchange mechanism between the negatively charged hydroxyl group on a saccharide, in this case, and a positively charged metal cation on the surface of the gel of the packed column. Various metal cations can be used. These include hydrogen, lead, calcium, zinc, and sodium. Shodex offers a series of columns that include all of these cations. This is called the sugar series. The Shodex sugar series columns do not only operate in ligand exchange mode, but in a combination of modes. In this chart, we see the different columns, or the various columns, and the various modes that they operate in, in conjunction with ligand exchange. For example, the sugar SC1011, SC1821, SP0810, and at the bottom, the KS800, operate in ligand exchange mode and also in size exclusion mode. The SC1011, has an exclusion limit of 1,000, whereas the SC1821 has an exclusion limit of 10,000. These two co columns use calcium as the counter ion. At the bottom, the sugar KS800 uses sodium as the counter ion. Its exclusion limit ranges from 1,000 to about 200 million, depending on which column you select. Conversely, the sugar SC1211 and SZ5532 operate on ligand exchange mode and helic mode. Their counter ions include calcium and zinc, calcium for the SC1211 and zinc for the SZ5532. So what makes ligand exchange mode so advantageous for HPLC separation? Let's take a look at an example. Specifically, let's look at D-glucose and D-galactose. These compounds differ only by the location of the hydroxyl group in their chain. The sugar rings and their native conformations, in this case, chair conformation, as seen in this diagram. D-glucose on the left, D-galactose on the right, the D-glucose hydroxyl groups are in the axial equatorial axial conformation. Conversely, for D-galactose, the hydroxyl groups are in equatorial equatorial axial conformation. These two conformations make it easier or harder for the counter ion on the solid phase to bind to the sugars. In the case of D-glucose, the metal counter ion can bind more easily, that is, more strongly than for D-galactose, where there's only two binding sites that are available. Hence, there can be made a separation made between the two different sugars that cannot otherwise be made using other phase separation modes. 
we can see the differences of the counter ions in their charge and charge density on the effects of the retention of sugars. In this example, the chromatograms on the left outline the KS801 with a sodium counter ion, the SC1011 with a calcium counter ion, and the SP0810 with a lead counter ion. In terms of the sodium counter ion, the sugars glucose, sorbitol, and fructose cannot be separated. Conversely, when we use the SC1011 with a calcium counter ion, glucose, sorbitol, and fructose are clearly separated. The total elution time is just over 20 minutes. At the bottom, we use lead as a counter ion in the column SP0810. Again, the three sugars are resolved. However, it takes almost 40 minutes before sorbitol is eluted from the column. So let's review. We broke down our compounds, or analytes, into four different groups, A, B, C, or D, based on molecular weight or polarity. In general, compounds of low polarity, size exclusion chromatography and organic solvent is the best separation mode. Conversely, for compounds of high polarity, size exclusion chromatography and aqueous solvent is the best mode of separation. For low molecular weight, high polarity compounds, size exclusion, ion exchange, ion chromatography, ion exclusion, and normal phase are the best separation modes. Also, reverse phase can be used. For low molecular weight, low polarity compounds, normal phase is the best separation mode. For compounds of moderate molecular weight and high polarity, ion exchange is the best separation mode. For compounds of relatively low to moderate molecular weight and moderate polarity, reverse phase is the best separation mode. If you'll notice, the area that includes reverse phase also overlaps with low molecular weight, high polarity molecules or compounds. So, do the separation modes that we discussed today cover all of the compounds out there that can be separated? Of course not. There are some more complicated compounds that can't simply be separated using size exclusion chromatography or ion exchange or reverse or normal phase or even helic. However, there are more advanced separations that are based on chemical interactions that can separate those compounds that are too complicated to separate using the separation modes that we discussed today. Some of those advanced separation modes include affinity chromatography, chiral chromatography, and hydrophobic interaction chromatography, among others. Those types of chromatography we can discuss in an advanced webinar in the future. So that concludes the technical portion of our webinar. For the next few slides, let's discuss our technical support as well as our website and the different types of information that you can gather from both. In terms of technical support, we can assist you with column and standards selections, separation modes, column specifications and maintenance, and any column problems that you may encounter while you're using our products. Our webpage is easy to navigate. Just type in www.showdex.net into your web browser and this is the screen that you will see, our home page. The menu bar of our home page consists of different links, including products and applications, downloads, a link to contact us, any order inquiries that you might have, information about us, as well as terms of use and career opportunities that we may have. The main portion of the page shows our background in the upper left-hand corner, any top news in the upper right hand corner, special offers that we may have, promotions for example in the bottom right hand corner, and the most important part of the page HPLC 101 in the bottom left hand corner. 
the HPLC 101 gives you various lessons broken down into different lessons, beginning with introduction to HPLC, theories and types of HPLC columns, partition absorption chromatography, SEC chromatography, and so on. So let's do a little navigating. Up in the menu bar, we'll start out with products and applications. The products and applications page is a diverse page where you can search for any type of application or product that we offer. In this example, we've typed in the term glucose and searched for different applications. If you look on the left hand part of the screen, we found 120 applications that are based on glucose or that relate to glucose. This includes glucose, saccharides in food, extract of wheat, rod, sucralose, and so on. If you are uncertain about the exact term that you need to enter or the exact analysis that you need to be looking for or application, you can also search by sample name or by alphabetical order. In this instance, we searched by saccharides. The applications found include saccharides and organic acids. Some of the results you can see on the screen include column selection by separation mode, by sample category, by combination of saccharides. Further down, we have a list of related terms, such as monosaccharides and oligosaccharides, or acid saccharides and phosphorylated saccharides. Further down, you can see we have polysaccharides and organic acids as well. These are all terms relating to saccharides and organic acids. Alternatively, you can search for a particular product for your application. In this instance, we've typed in the term sugar to locate different sugar series products. After entering the term, click on find product, and on the left, the products will appear. In this case, for the sugar series, you can see all the sugar series analytical and guard columns appear. By clicking on one of the products, in this case, Sugar SH1821. On the right hand side of the screen, the specifications for that column will appear. These are product properties that include the packing material, separation mode, counter ion, plate number, size, that is the ID, the inner dimension, and the column length, particle size, the temperature range, everything that you need to know to use your HPLC column. So let's look at the next item on our menu bar, Downloads. Shodex offers downloads for all of its customers and registered users that include our catalog, technical notebooks, and user manuals. However, in order to access the downloads, you must register first. It's quick and easy to do, and it allows you completely free access to the entire website, that is, downloads. Once you have registered, all you have to do is sign in by entering your login name and the password that you've chosen. Once you've signed in, you can go to the downloads page and you can see our different types of downloads that we currently offer, such as our Shodex catalog. The current catalog year is 2013 to 2015. We also offer a variety of technical notebooks. And most importantly, we offer manuals for all of our HPLC columns, not only for specific columns, but for specific column series. In this case, we offer the Sugar series. Here's an example of our manual, and in this instance, the Sugar series. You can see on the first page of the manual, there's an introduction and types and specifications of the different columns that we offer in the Sugar series. Thank you for watching the Shodex webinar on demand. We hope you found the topics and information useful for you. 
In the future, we plan to present more webinars on more advanced topics. In the meantime, if you have any technical questions or need a price quote, you can always reach us at support at showdex.net. We will respond within 24 hours, excluding weekends and holidays. Thanks again for watching.